She could not help but feel both the privilege and the burden of once again being a woman of color in a position to influence change. That's a, a very powerful line toward the opening of the case. Part of the main reason that I wrote the case was to get HBS students comfortable or frankly uncomfortable, but involved in having conversations about race in the classroom. Because I think that as future leaders, we really can be the ones who change the pattern and kind of the expectation that people of color are typically the ones to push forward on initiatives for diversity, equity, and inclusion. After reading something like 300 HPS cases in my RC year, I wanted to have a chance to be on the other side of the table and see kind of the magic behind the scenes. I reached out to my professor, Professor Deborah Spar, and asked her about the case writing process. I was put in touch then with someone from the Case Research and Writing Center and found one that I was particularly interested in because it had a protagonist who was a woman and a woman of color. The name of the case is Linda Oubre at Whittier College. She's the first woman of color to be president of the college. She's also an alumna of HBS. I'm also a woman and a woman of color, and so that was personally important to me. The case process is like creating a treasure hunt because you don't want to tell students all of the information that they need and you don't want to lay everything out on the table, but you want to kind of put hints and key facts and phrases and nuances throughout the case and in the exhibits as well so that they get where you want them to go without you holding their hand the entire way. It's a fine line between guiding the reader but not telling them everything and letting them come to conclusions and ideas on their own. That perspective gave me a lot of respect and appreciation for what our professors do when they write cases and when they teach cases because they don't go up there to lecture and to tell you the answer. When I actually went to begin writing the case, I started by writing down kind of the questions and the topics and the themes that I was hoping would come out when it was taught. It was definitely collaborative writing the case with Professor Spar. That said, I was surprised pleasantly by how much autonomy I got. And so I led interviews independently. She gave me the trust and responsibility to do that. So I talked to staff members, faculty, students, Linda herself and other members of her leadership team. There were times when it was difficult. We were talking about hard subjects. We were talking about race. We were talking about changing their board, which also involves a lot of internal politics at the college. And there were times I went to Professor Spar just to get her guidance on how to handle those situations. Being able to see the case taught by Professor Spar was a really kind of surreal moment. And Linda was able to come and speak with the class and see the way that they engaged with the case and with her very personal story. It's still hard for a lot of people to talk about race, especially coming from different backgrounds. As we move throughout the case and kind of different phases of it, hands started shooting up and debate started happening. Seeing Professor Spar orchestrate that symphony, I think was really, um, really powerful. To have my name on a case that will live in the HBS archives is something that's really special to me. And I think it's a great experience that helps you better appreciate the case method, case writing, and how cases are taught.